Madagascar. The very name is full of exotic promise. It's found off the southeast coast of Africa, but 150 million years ago, it used to be part of a supercontinent called Gondwana land. This huge landmass split to form the world we know today. Madagascar was cut adrift from Africa, creating the world's fourth largest island, about the size of France. 95% of the creatures here live nowhere else on Earth. It's a stray, odd collection, straight from the laboratory, which has evolved into a very strange menagerie. I'm here to save one of the most mysterious animals found in this little known country. In the trees above me is an animal feared by the people of Madagascar. And it's believed that anyone who sees one will die. It's thought to harbor death and misfortune. But the eye eye is actually a type of lemur, a primate like us, and a close evolutionary relative. It was thought to be extinct, but then in 1961 it was rediscovered. And for the last four decades, it's been on the world's most endangered list. If we don't act now, we're going to lose the eye eye forever. My search for the mysterious eye eye begins here in Antananarivo, the capital of Madagascar. For nearly four centuries, this settlement has ruled over this remote, little-known country, which harbors 530 of the world's most endangered species. They offered me cheetahs. Would you like to promote the cause of the cheetah? Cheetahs are very sexy, very beautiful, and a lot of people love them. And I said, what about the eye eye? What about the what? A little creature of the night, a cross between Yoda and Nosferatu. Nocturnal and very charming, as far as I'm concerned. And the underdog. Who wants to save the eye eye? Aye aye. Madagascar is a land haunted by ghosts. People's lives are ruled by legends and superstition. At the heart of their beliefs is the power of the dead. Their ancestors must not be forgotten and are continually revered. So much so that it is the custom to dig up your relatives and parade them through the village at an annual ceremony before giving the bones a good clean and then reburying them. And so as not to upset any of the spirits. There's a complex system that rules their lives called fadi, or as we would know it, taboo. Animals are capable of having bad fadi. The chameleon is feared because of its weird roving eyes, which the Malagash people believe can see into the future and the past. Unfortunately, the eye eye is also feared, to the extent that if you see one, you will die. As a result, they are often killed. Maybe that's why there's so few documentaries about them. Mm. <laughs> The Ai's bizarre looks inspired Tolkien's legendary Gollum. Convincing the Malagash this isn't a harbinger of doom is not going to be easy. If anyone can help me understand the Ai's plight, then it's Christopher Holmes. He's lived here for some years and is now working for the Wildlife Conservation Society. He's an ideal person to tell me why the Malagash fear the eye eye. Why are people afraid of the eye eye, do you think? I think the, the people have misunderstandings about the eye eye because it's a nocturnal species, meaning it's only active at night. 
be, it's a solitary species, meaning you don't find them in large groups. Mm -hmm. They tend to be individual over large areas, which makes it difficult to encounter. If it is found in the village, it's probably the unfortunate fact that it's trying to get from point A to point B, yeah. and the village is in between. Yeah. They see this strange creature that they maybe have never seen before, but have certainly heard about, mm -hmm. uh, and it, it, it instills this fear, and the animal gets, uh, gets killed. Ayais are weird and rare. Ayais scientists are even rarer. I'm hoping they're not weird. I'm leaving the city behind to go to my first destination, an area of preserved rainforest on the Mashwala Peninsula, to try to find my first wild ayai. We've been travelling now for just about an hour, and it's only when you get up here that you see just how vast the island is and how much forest there is down there. There's an enormous canopy. So I think it's going to be quite difficult to spot our eye eye, but I'm very hopeful. Nobody's quite sure how many there are left on Madagascar. And part of the reason for this is that they're very, very difficult to track. Um, they are, they're not going to be any bigger than a large domestic cat. They're black all over and they only come out at night. And when they do come out, they're moving very fast through the forest canopy. So um, we've got our work attacked. But I'm excited. This is Nosy Manga Bay, an island surrounded by shark infested waters and home to one of Madagascar's last surviving colonies of Aiai. It's where I've come to meet scientist Zach Farris from Little Rock, USA, who is making the Aiai his life's work. We're leaving the path now. I didn't notice whether his eyebrows met in the middle or not, but anyway, here goes. To find an Aiai, we have to look for clues during the day so we know where to be when they come out at night. But I didn't think it would be this easy. We found a nest already. Yeah, right up in here we've got a nest. If you see right up in here, in all of that tangle of lion of vines right up there, yeah. there's a massive vault there. What the eye eye does is it finds these spots way up in the canopies where these lion of vines are entangled, and it uses different sticks and leaves to build a nest way up, usually between 70 and 20 meters. Whoa. And the eye eye will typically use um, anywhere up to about 15 nests just for one individual. This one uh, looks to be possibly two meters by two meters, wow. which is a large size. And that's uh, for just one? Just for one individual. Wow. Now again, they've been known to actually share nests if it's oh. a male and female out there, okay. if there's a um, possibility of mating, right? Um, but typically their home ranges are so large that rarely do they ever come in contact with each other. The eye eye only comes out at night. During that time, it can travel up to four kilometers, visiting up to 15 nests, which makes finding any trace of this lemur extremely difficult. To have a chance of finding the eye eye, what we need is to find the tree that is fruiting and the signs that the eye eye has been eating her seeds. How big are they? Uh, the canarium seeds are typically just a few centimeters long. Yep. The canary madagascariensis is real distinct because of these large buttressing roots. And so uh, not only is this tree really good for the eye eye nest, but it's actually uh, their main food source. In fact, it's believed that the population density is actually tied to this one tree and that it's, it's, it's vital for this tree to be present, for the eye eye to be present within the area. And so since we're not finding any seeds around here, we probably need to move on until we find one of these trees that's actually in fruit and then we'll look for those seeds and then hopefully we'll see the eye eye. The rainforest is like a complex office block. Up in the penthouse with the best views are the lemurs like these white-faced brown lemurs and their larger cousins, the black and white ruffed. Mid-block and much more difficult to spot are the chameleons. This one is imaginatively called the brown chameleon. Then down at basement level lurks the leaf-tailed gecko. So the sun hasn't even set out there. 
it's getting dark in the forest. So you hear that out in the distance? It's like a monster that's uh, Reese, if I forget it. It's a black and white. It's impressive, it's impressive sound. At last, Zach spotted what we've been looking for, canarium fruit. This is a great sign of eye eye within the area. More than likely if it was made last night, and this is a really good feeding site, it will come back here again okay. tonight. Okay. So this is what we've been looking for all day. Between Excellent. the truss marks between the canarium trees, we've been looking for a spot just like this, which is ideal for the eye eye. Okay. So we'll camp down here, all right. with torches ready. Thanks, we'll see if we can't catch an eye eye tonight. Excellent. So we've got ourselves as comfortable as possible. I'm going to stay as quiet as possible. And we've just got to wait now. And hope that we'll be successful. And um, actually, we need just turn the light off and then we can just listen. Zach, a veteran of II stakeouts, broke the clamor of the rainforest with his secret weapon, the vocalizer. So this vocalization that I'm playing now is considered a whimper vocalization. Uh -huh. And it's typically played when there's a really good food source nearby. I haven't heard anything yet that sounds like ai, -ai because supposedly the ai, -ai is named for its call. Right. The reason it was given that name is because when in time someone would climb a tree and go into its nest or disturb the animal, okay. it gives this real distinctive hi hi call, mm -hmm. in which mm -hmm. it gets its name, I, I. <laughs> but no amount of the vocalizer was attracting the I, I to our sight. I would love to say that the longer you're here, the better your chances are. Yeah. But typically in a spot like this, with a, with a feeding site that we know they visit early, the later, the, later it goes, the, the, the less likely it is we're going to be able to see one. Have, have you spent a lot of time not seeing I, I's? Oh, yeah. In fact, uh, I've spent more time not seeing them than I have seen them. Um, I, I think at this point, uh, I've spent uh, just a little over 60 hours uh, total in, in my studies out looking for the eye eye uh, with only one observation. You have to put in a lot more hours. You have to put hours. in quite a few more hours yeah. to be able to get that lucky, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well. So, shall we call it a night, I suppose? If you think so. To see the eye eye is proving to be as hard as I'd feared, but it's not going to put me off. I'm now more determined than ever to see this strange creature in the wild. <laughs>